Swissborg is the official partner of my channel where you can buy, sell, hold, and more importantly, stake your cryptocurrencies. You can even earn yield on your stable coins. Sign up with my link and you'll earn up to $100 worth of their native token CHSB just for depositing 50 euros worth of crypto. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's uh, let's get into it. So there's a few things to talk about, obviously, with the FOMC uh, on the horizon. What are they going to do? 25 basis points? Pause. Well, we'll talk about that first. Look, I don't know if you've noticed it. Uh, we'll come back to the euro, but I don't know if you noticed that the um, commodity prices have started to uh, to rally. Oil being one of them and being the main thing that I would uh, highlight. Look, I'm uh, I'm I'm not going to say oil's got further to run, but it does look like it probably could. Yesterday we smashed through all major moving averages here on the daily, so higher oil prices will likely move into higher inflation. Because oil equals food and fuel prices, which is the main thing that's well that we can all feel right now, right? So food costs more because well, it costs more to make it because all the factories and all the farming and then all the transportation takes fuel gets added onto the price of food plus just fuel for you and me anyway, you know, to get from A to B to wherever you want to be. So look, there's a good chance that we're going to see CPI coming through higher. Maybe not next time, but probably, but certainly the time after that, uh, all of this will get priced in. And so what markets like to do is price stuff in beforehand. The markets are amazing at doing that. So the markets are probably going to price this in and price in what I believe to be a rate hike coming, you know, to compensate for the food and fuel, the inflation. So you've got to think about that. Now, I was saying, it feels like about three, maybe four weeks ago, that we're going to likely see a rotation from um, stocks into commodities, right? I've been saying that for a little while. I said, look, it can take a while, these things. They're not, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. This isn't just like everybody piles in at once. You know, you position yourself accordingly and you wait for that rotation to kick in. Now, we all recognize here that... Um, that uh, the, the, the S&P and all his best friends, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, Industrial Average, have been tearing up. And I also said, you know, this is the bottom, this is where I went crazy on it. And look, every time we come to a resistance, we smash right through it. We're at a resistance already now, like a, like a major one. If we break through here, we are looking for new all-time high territory, which is, you know, it's not... It's not unimaginable, I have to say. We do have quite a few drives of bearish divergence on the way up on the S&P on the daily... Yeah, the four hour, to be honest, is still relatively decent, <laughs> to be honest with you. And the weekly is not overheated, but it's getting quite hot. And the the, uh, the MACD, you can see some very significant extremes, really, um, on this. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to scare anybody or anything like that about where things are going to go. But at the moment, yeah, we look like we could easily go up a little further. I'm not sold on it, to be fair. I did get out of a lot of my stocks. Well, I say that. I got out of stocks and went into mining stocks. Uh, Glencore and, 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 uh, and obviously precious metals and all that sort of stuff because I believe in my own, you know, BS, obviously. I, the, the, the reason I make these videos is because I talk about what it is that I do. You realise that, don't you? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah, this is what I do for, you know, this is my bread and butter. It's how I make my money. So I just sit here and I just talk my mind really about what I think is going on in the markets, which for the most part is pretty uninterested for crypto these days. But I still think that this rotation, and it looks like it's becoming more evident now that the rotation is is taking place. So money falling out of stocks, slowly but surely, and into you know, commodities, and commodity-based stocks, like this bad boy over here. So... Again, this is where I took all my AI chips off the table and, and put a lot of it into you know, th this particular mining stock. Again, I made videos all about it. So that is you know, the rotation that I've been talking about, stocks to commodities. Um, and then maybe you know back into cash, or oh, plenty of it could be going into cash. Because if we look at the Dixie, the Dixie is warming up a little further now for probably a, a bounce into the 102 area. Which is not a big deal either. So let's have a look at our friend Euro, which is more useful than the Dixie itself. And we'll have a look at this. Because we are approaching a support at the moment, being the Bollinger Band Centre, which is ever so slightly below where we are right now. So 105.7, uh, sorry, one. 
sorry, 110.57. We'll be looking for 110.4, basically, and see if we get a support around there. The daily is still pretty bullish, to be honest with you. Just a series of higher highs, higher lows. No short signals, no nothing like that. Still seems okay. 65% more likely to stay in that area. If we go to the 4 hour, it looks weaker, obviously. And we got 110 flat, basically, a 200 exponential. So we're still bullish as far as uh, I'm concerned on, on the euro. Looking for a bounce uh, around these areas, which means a pullback on the Dixie. But recognise that we are approaching the FOMC meeting uh, with a rate hike around the corner potentially and uh, this is why I thought I would talk about oil and commodity prices because that will spook markets a little bit as they see oil moving up into 80 and see where we go from there so just keep your eyes on the prize you know so uh, commodities being a better state of play for the last few weeks than most other markets unless you're involved in particular stocks of interest overall Right, so let's move on to uh, Bitcoin, shall we? So here we are, Bitcoin on the daily, below most moving averages of, uh, on the uh, smaller term time frames. Uh, approaching that um, 28,400, we'll call it, which is where I would be looking for our first bounce. And if that bounce takes place, you'd be looking for a rejection at best up to the Bollinger Band, which is around 30,000, just above 30,000. Take it to a four hourly, which is where you know, we were getting a bit spooked those last few days because we were seeing the weakness lack of conviction on this got uh, on this what should have been a golden cross retest we retested it so many times that it seemed almost inevitable that it would break we saw the death cross retest on the simple moving averages um, uh, where we thought right that is probably it and that looks like a very clear rejection on a 200 simple moving average classic death cross retest with way more power than anything that was shown on the golden cross so it looked like we we're going to break down we started to break down at the moment we've held at this sort of rough intermediate area which for me is a bit of a non area uh, I don't really see any reason to find this area attractive for a buy, especially with a new gold uh, death cross falling in on the exponentials. And so I would expect that we are going to you know, be reunited with the 28,400 or 500, uh, maybe even today, um, and see what happens in the FOMC tomorrow, obviously. Um, and uh, and if that breaks, then incremental drops down. So the next major drop, I'll be looking for around 26,600. Again, you know, all of this is effectively opportunity because we are looking at something no different to our previous cycles, really. And we stand back and admire what's taking place here. Uh, this is your, um, your, your bear market, this is your bull market, this is consolidation, this is your black swan, this is your parabolic run. So what we're seeing here is a, a, you know, a bull market with, with a meandering around 100% gain. It's fine to see a pullback, absolutely fine to see a pullback and a consolidation. All of that is perfectly fine. Nothing to be afraid of. Uh, and uh, if you're looking to, for long-term opportunities, you just dollar cost average. Remember, I've been saying for uh, for ages now that I think what effectively the range that we're going to be in for the most part of this bull market for Bitcoin is between 20,000 and 40,000. That'll be our range. It's a range that's worthy of playing. It's a 100% range. And then when we break from 40,000, that's when we start to see you know, moves similar to this, where we go straight up to a new all-time high. And I don't know where that'll be. It's highly speculative to start putting numbers out there it's you know it's the sort of clickbait that lots of people will do but for me the idea is just to follow a trend and uh, and look at the market cycle and recognize it for what it is and um, overlay it to what's going on in the broader markets which is still you know inflation bound isn't it really we would imagine all of that to mostly be sorted uh, you know by the time this breaks for 40,000 maybe a year to 18 months from now. So we've got plenty of time for all of that to smooth itself out. And until then, it's going to be a bumpy a bumpy journey. So let's just look, look at this on the uh, on the weekly anyway. So we've got our uh, 20 weekly coming in at 28,500. So it is not just a, a, a random area. This is a very strong support here um, and one that would probably be worthy of a little, a little try, a little play. Uh, to see what happens because if we are going to bounce from there, there there is a chance that that area could be the bounce that uh, actually recovers uh, again we, we're focusing on traditional markets as well as just bitcoin but if, if we do bounce from 28,500 it wouldn't be at all surprising because we've got a horizontal uh, trend line there and uh, for previous supports and resistances plus your 20 weekly so th that that could be a really really decent area and if we did shoot up from there i wouldn't be massive i wouldn't be at all surprised but breaking down from that area yeah we'll, we'll see some deeper deeper dives and um, maybe even to the mid 25,000 really the bottom of this Bollinger Band I'd be surprised to see it any lower than that but if we did go lower 
probably looking to see something around 24,600 but for me to mark off all these areas and, and people to hear these prices um, it, it might not be helpful because I know what people will do they'll think oh I'll wait for it to get all the way down there then I'll buy it's not really the way to do it if you if you want to buy a bitcoin you, you do it on every incremental you know, big drop down it's a dollar cost average scenario really it's just trade like a trading bot so, uh, uh, long story short, things are still in the balance and we're waiting for the euro to see if it can bounce. We're waiting to see if oil can continue further and then we'll know which side we're on. But based on Bitcoin's own chart, I do think it's uh, most likely to come back down and uh, at 28,500 is, uh, is the main area for some form of reaction. And if we fail to react around there, we might be looking at a bit more of a longer drawn out consolidation for Bitcoin and all of crypto that could take uh, weeks, maybe even months to finish off. And that's not a bad thing. That is effectively the markets. And, and if you've been around for Bitcoin in the last cycle or the one before that, you'll, you'll, you'll be absolutely fine with that because this is how it works. You go up and you go down. You go up and you go down. And that's basically it. But uh, the, the overall vibe of, the, of a Bitcoin chart is that it, we basically end up going up more than we go down. But that's not without some <laughs> downside, which could take, like I say, weeks or months. Still very early days, like I say. Um, this could end up being a, a bear trap if we bounce from here and, and liquidate everybody. But as we approach the FOMC tomorrow, we do have to be, you know, Carefully cautious. Like I say, took a lot of chips off the table these last few days just to see what happens. And um, I'm happy to remain with those chips, you know, in my hands. Uh, and uh, I've got enough Bitcoin. I won't be buying any more, but I am more interested in altcoins. The lower they go, the more attractive they are to me. Um, and uh, I'll be looking to pick those up in the incremental drops uh, more than Bitcoin. And again, that sounds very unpopular because everyone's like, oh, this is a Bitcoin driven market. Bitcoin's so, yeah, I've got my Bitcoin. That's fine. What I'm looking to do is buy the things that nobody wants and um, with a view to sell them when everybody wants, which is probably not going to be, you know, anytime soon. But you're buying them, I'll be buying them incrementally on the way down the lower they go because people don't like them. They think they're rubbish and uh, they're unpopular. And this is the best time usually to start scraping them up and adding them to your portfolio and staking them if you can. Right, thank you for watching. I'll leave it with you there. If you want to join the live streams, we've got a Patreon live stream tonight. Feel free to join that. Link's in the description below. Otherwise, hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.